Hey ADF fans, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. This is going to be a video on the self-join pattern in data flows. In data factory, you're going to run into the self-join pattern fairly often in data flows. And you're going to want to use it when you are doing things like aggregating data, for example. So aggregates are very popular and uh, you'll run into those a lot with ETL patterns and data quality patterns for distinct rows and analytics when you're calculating uh, different measurements. And so the, the reason why you're going to want the self-join pattern is because an aggregate transformation acts a lot like you'd expect the SQL aggregates to react. And when you have, for example, a select statement, where you're selecting counts, you're selecting min-max, and those sort of aggregates, the only columns that are projected out of that are the columns that are part of that aggregation. The same thing will happen in data flows with your aggregate transformation. Only the columns that are part of the aggregate are projected forward. And so what happens is you may want to bring the original set of metadata and columns back into your data flow. And let me show you how you do it. So let's go onto our design surface. We have our canvas open and I have applied a source transformation, which goes to my movies CSV file, the same demo I use in almost all these videos. So what we're going to do is let's first uh, do a quick aggregate on it. So what I want to do is I want to provide an aggregate of the average rating by year for these movies. So the group by is going to be year. And then for the aggregate function, it's going to be very, very simple. And we'll, we'll just um, call the new uh, column we're going to create for this calculation as average rating. Yeah, we'll do that. The next question is going to be simple. It's going to be average uh, rating. Uh, rating is a string right now in my uh, metadata, so I'm going to cast that. Ranger. And I also want to round it, so the average is going to be kind of messy uh, with a lot of uh, precision, so I'm going to round this to two places. And that should right do that. We can go ahead and preview this just to take a look at what we, what we have so far. And yep, everything looks pretty much what I expected. Okay, so we're good. Now, what happens when you look at the inspect? The inspect is your metadata tab in data flows, and you can see that the input, the rows coming into the aggregate transformation, I should say rows, the columns, that is coming into the aggregate transformation out of our source, there's six of them. And when you look at the output then, because we are grouping by year and creating a new column called average rating, that's it. That's all you get out of the aggregate transformation. So this may be fine. You may want to do something like this. When you do, when you perform this kind of aggregate in a data flow, a common thing to do would just be sync this to a different table. This table might be an aggregate table. And then you'll want to continue your um, data flow and ETL on a different stream. The way you do that, let me actually just uh, terminate this to a folder for now so we have a placeholder for it. When you do that, you now have a valid um, data flow that's going to do there. So let's say you wanted to continue on a different path. All you would have to do is take that source and build a new branch from it. Now you've duplicated that. What I suggest you always do is after your new branch is to add a select transformation onto it to so alias that. Now I like to call this you know, something like a duplicate source. So I know what I'm working with. So I have a, a, a name and an alias essentially for the entire stream. Now I can continue to build down here with the rest of my ETL while I have a separate aggregate path at the top. So this might be landing to a aggregate table and then this is going to land to a more detailed table. And in this case what happens is when you look at the inspect I have all my metadata and all my columns back. Okay. So if you wanted to add the aggregate data into your original data, that, that's when you use the self-join pattern. So what we can do is after the select, we can add a join. This is going to allow us to join in the aggregation that we created at the top. So the right hand in this case, I'm going to use as an average rating by year. Now, so now when I join, I'm, I'm going to want to naturally use my um, primary key for my left hand side, which is movie, but I don't have it on my right hand side. All I have is this aggregation. So that's okay. You, you can either artificially include that in your um, inside of your aggregate. One way you can do that is on your aggregate settings, on your aggregate function, you could add another aggregation. You could do something like this. You'd say, give me a um, sort of a uh, artificial or a um, an ID that is first, but it's just coming from uh, this this aggregation. So what I would do is I would do an aggregation called first. You can use last, it doesn't matter, but I'm just going to use first just so I can include a, uh, an ID with it. 
Now, I'm not going to do that for this one because I, I don't need to in this case, but I just wanted you to be aware that that is something that you can do to artificially include the ID that you need for your join, for your linkage. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take my join over here and I'm going to join on something else. So I'm um, providing the average rating by year. I think it might be cool to include that average rating with every year that matches that rating. So I'm just going to use year as my join. Now what's important to know about the type of join you do is if I do an inner join, then I'm only going to get the matches on here. But in this case, I'm matching on year, so everything should be included. But if you're going to include every movie ID, you may want to include in that case then a left outer so that you make sure that you get everything coming in from here, even if there's not a matching aggregate for it. And then you're only just going to uh, provide the aggregation when it matches. But in this case, inner will be fine because I know I'm going to have every year already included. You know what, let's just go ahead and preview it. Let's take a look at uh, seeing where we're at at this point and make sure that the logic that I'm explaining to you is correct. And while we wait for the preview to, to load, the combination of the new branch, that's step one, step two being the select for the alias, and step three being the join. Those three things added together create for you the self-join pattern. Now there's gonna be one more thing that we need to do, and that's some cleanup. So because we're joining on ourselves, what's happening is, we do have what we want. We do have the average rating uh, for the year of the movies. That looks fine to me. But what we get now is we get a complete duplicate of the metadata that was coming from both sides because we had a year. And actually, I think year is going to be the only duplicate column in this case. That's fine. But what you want to do is I like to uh, explicitly prune that out with a select transformation. So I'd add a select, and I'll call this uh, prune, prune dupes. Oh, yeah, that's a nice thing to it. And what I'm going to do is I have already skipped duplicate column set on my uh, options. And if you look at the inspect, this is where we're going to see if there's anything duplicated. So let's see, we have one movie, one year. So that's good. So it took care of our duplicates. We had six columns coming in. Now we have one additional rating. And what we've ended up with now is a set of data that has a clean set of columns. There's no duplicate columns. It has, no, it has um, the aggregation included in the original row and we're back to uh, joining the scene schedule. So the self-join is complete and now at the end of this transformation, uh, at the end of this stream, we can now just sync this data. So to finish this, up, this off, we just add a sync to the end. And that's all fine. We'll set this in the folder. We should be valid. Save. And I like it enough that I'm going to give this a better name than Dataflow 10. I'm going to keep this around for safekeeping. I'm going to call this self-joined. And that's it. Thanks for watching.